I know that this pair of cable, this video is not giving us some great resolution. So go and grab a uh, paper periodic table so you can make notes on it. So this is the structure of our current periodic table. Uh, there have been other forms um, proposed over the years, uh, other forms uh, that we used to use. This is our preferred one right now. And um, this row right here goes all the way over to the end nowadays. So this one's not the most up to date. So we have a, a total of 108 elements down to, a, you know, 118 elements down to a missing corner down here. Hmm. So if we go all the way over to the end of this uh, row, filling in this whole way, uh, we have 118 elements. Our um, largest element um, over 100 years ago was number 92 uranium. So. We should remember that the elements are identified by number of um, protons in the nucleus. So that's a whole number. So each of these boxes will have a, a name, a whole number, the symbol of the element, and then a decimal number representing its mass. So uh, this was the largest natural element. And then uh, once we started playing with radioactive elements and radioactive processes, we made a couple more elements and then we deliberately started to search for the rest. And we got our way from 92 up to 118. And we're still trying to get more. If we make any more, we're going to add another row to the periodic table. So uh, the numbers count across and then they uh, drop down. And then these two rows down here, they actually are stolen from this slice right here. So they're not supposed to be separate. Uh, they are just to pull out to make the power table from getting too long. Um, and the modern power tables tend to uh, take these two elements and bring them down at the beginning of this two rows right here also. So we have groups and um, vertical columns and rows. The vertical columns are called groups. So our columns are groups and they're put together to share similar chemical properties. We have four columns, four groups that are named because of their drastic chemical properties. So uh, starting from the right side here, this blue one starts from helium number two on top. Uh, and these are the noble gases. They're all gases because they're not reacting with any of the other compounds. So they are totally inert to chemical reactions. And that is column 18. So we have a total 18 columns. We don't give, give these two rows extra column numbers. So we have 18 columns. Uh, and that's our modern numbering system. We also have uh, the American system that uses A and B letters with numbers. Um, column 17 are the halogens. These are all, all extremely reactive nonmetals. So they're sharing the nonmetal property, they're sharing it, they're extremely reactive. We use um, chlorine to disinfect drinking water in swimming pools. Sometimes we use bromine to, to clean out swimming pools. Sometimes we use iodine for backpacking or other purposes. On the far side of the periodic table, the column number two are the alkaline earth metals. Uh, these tend to be somewhat reactive, but not as reactive as the first column, the alkaline metals. Uh, so the first couple elements in um, column two, beryllium and magnesium, um, we can use them without them reacting with air or water. The heavier elements, calcium, strontium, etc., these will react with air and water. So we can't use them as metals. Uh, row column one, uh, not including the very top element hydrogen, but starting from lithium on down, 
these are the alkali metals. These, these are all, all very highly reactive. You'll be able to find videos of them being thrown into water on YouTube where they will react violently, sometimes blowing up. So the groups, the vertical columns share similar chemical properties. We have seven periods. So the rows are called periods. So each row starts from the top one is period one, then two, three, four, five, six, seven. So these two that are pulled out, the top row here is part of row six. The second row is part of row seven. So they are period six and period seven down here also. So we will have questions on homework and quizzes asking if we can identify groups or columns. So we might give uh, an element like um, copper element 29 and say what uh, group is it in? Well, that is in column 11, so that's group 11. Or you might say what period is in? And that would be the fourth row, so that'd be the fourth period. Okay, so the similar chemical properties is one of the main structures, reason for the structure of the periodic table here. Also, this is showing our rows again, showing that uh, you know, each row is a different period. Uh, and then of the bottom two rows, the upper one is from period six and the bottom one is from period seven. The elements overall have a um, broad distinction of properties. So again, I apologize that the um, resolution is not great right here. Um, but the um, most of our elements, the lower left of the parent table are all metals. So the vast majority of our elements are metals. Uh, we'll give the properties of metals in a moment. Uh, the very first element, hydrogen, is a non-metal. Then the upper right corner of the periodic table are non-metals. We have a diagonal separating the metals from the non-metals. And these are our metalloids or semi-metals. So sketch this out in your periodic table, get a periodic table that will help you see these better. Uh, so we have our, uh, the dividing line, the summer metals. So we have boron, silicon, germanium, arsenic, antimony, tellurium, acetine. So these are our metalloids or semi metals. Uh, the white boxes here, they haven't been designated as being metals, non-metals, or semi-metals yet. Or if they have, I have not caught up in that data yet. So again, we can ask you an element and is it, say, is it a metal or non-metal? So if we say lead, uh, element 82 is down here, is below this diagonal, so that would be a metal. If we see Chlorine element 17, it's in the upper right, it's a non-metal. So one of the defining features of metals is their electrical conductivity. So all metals are good electrical conductors. Um, and that uh, is a defining feature. Uh, it describes one of the internal properties of the atoms. Uh, metals uh, generally are malleable, uh, meaning if we hit them with a sledgehammer, they are more likely to bend instead of shatter. They're ductile, they can be pulled into a wire shape. Uh, they tend to have a, a shiny surface, a lustrous surface. Now, sometimes they don't because sometimes the surface gets oxidized and it's no longer metal, it becomes a ion compound, a salt. But the surface is a pure metal, then tends to have that shiny surface. Non-metals generally do not have these properties. Uh, so they are insulators, uh, meaning they are non-conductors generally. Um, there's uh, an exception there, but the exception does not 
uh, conduct electricity the way that metals conduct electricity. So it still makes it a non-metal. Uh, they're more likely to be brittle when they're in solid form. When you hit them with a, a hammer, and instead of bending, they shatter. So that would be like diamond. If you hit a diamond too hard, the diamond will shatter and not just bend. And uh, generally, the, the solids do not have that shiny, lustrous surface that metals do. And then we give general terms to blocks of the periodic table. So the two left columns and the right six columns, these are the most dramatic changes of chemical properties. So the, the four named groups are in that area and they go from highly reactive metals to a little reactive metals, to metals, metalloids, non-metals, highly reactive non-metals and non-reactive non-metals. So they have a dramatic change. So this are our representative elements or main group elements. They represent the variation that we see in our elements. The middle block here, these are all metals. We call these transition elements or transition metals. And then the two rows down and bottom, these are the inner transition elements or since they're all metals, again, they can be inner transition metals. The two rows are given um, different names based on the element that begins them, either up in this box here or down here when this area is empty. So the row in periodics is methanes, and the row in seven are the actinides. So again, we might give you a element like antimony asks what block it's in. It's a representative element, not a transition element or inner transition element. Uh, copper would be a transition metal, transition element. Um, um, plutonium down here would be an inner transition element. Um, in the bottom row, it would also be an actinide. 